this album has clear themes, man. It has clear themes. It's it's a heartbreaking record, but it's also a hopeful record. Right. I think. Was it important to you that it, that there wasn't a wallowing in your past or a wallowing in what you were going through when you wrote these songs? Yeah. There was hope throughout. Well, <clears throat> the, uh, there were lots of songs written, but the way that we and I wanted to put it together was to be the journey from looking at everything you're going through in your life be it good or bad or you know whatever and thinking am I going to run away from it am I going to blame for it am I going to deny it am I going to self-medicate um, or is there a way that by you know really digging d opening yourself right up to it that you might actually get to a more joyful place mm. because I don't know if it's an English thing or a, a religious guilt thing, but up to a certain point in my life, I was not um, completely vulnerable, and it caused you know some problems. If you don't let love really in, then you can't really you know give it back, and it's a. So for me, the what the what the ghost stories means to me is like. You've got to open yourself up to l love, and if you really do, of course, it will be painful at times. But then, it will be great at some point. You have to trust the universe, and so that's by the end of the record, it's getting to like a more okay. Things are going to be okay. So it's an album that traces the lesson that you had to learn in order to move on. Well, I think in life, everyone needs to be broken in some way. Mm. To, uh, to 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 um, there's a Japanese art form called kintsukuroi, where you where they smash a piece of pottery but then put it back together with uh, gold, <laughs> and I think everyone in their life goes through challenges, whether it's love or money or kids or illness, and um, certain poets. There's like the poet Rumi. There's this writer called Viktor Frankl. If you read their work. They they talk about like you have to really not run away from that stuff. But Someone said to me once, man, I was like, I, I was going through you know tough time. I was going right. through a broken time, and they said to me, I said I just want to go back to the way things were, you know. And he said, there is no going back. Yeah, you can never go back. So you you can either stand still and just suffer, or you can plow on through. Yeah, I think it's just life throws these colorful challenges at you. <laughs> And this is not to say I've suffered because, you know, suffering is a very different own, thing. But in your own way. No, no, no. Because people are going through real crazy stuff. Huh. This is just to say that in everyone in their life is given challenges that you either meet or you don't. And uh, what, what we decided to do on Ghost Stories was to um, really be honest about it and say, OK, this is what's been happening and... By the time there's a song called A Sky Full of Stars, that's like, okay, just approach everything with love and see what happens. Don't don't worry too much. Did you talk to your family and to your loved ones about this record and the songs you were writing as you were writing them? Did you feel that you were compelled to do that? Uh, <clears throat> well, they, they all hear everything as it's happening. Yeah. Yeah. And how was the reaction to some of these songs and some of these lyrics? Um... F f colorful. <laughs> There's a song called Magic, obviously, which people know as a single. Yeah. And what I really love about this is, is even though again it's one of those heartbreaking songs where you sort of you, you're celebrating what was, you're singing with this smile on your face almost. It's kind of a joyous performance in a strange way. Well, it is. That, no, that, this is the thing that, that my point to you is, although it starts off seeming like a heartbreak record, it's actually not. It's a joyful. Yeah realization yes that you can't escape what life's going to throw at you so just you know just enjoy it <laughs> you know like when you go to the gym and you're no I don't know about that but thanks you look, well you look great <laughs> you know and, and it's like okay I have to do an hour on the treadmill yeah like, and you're looking for any excuse not to do it yeah oh I, I don't want to do I feel a bit sick or, you know I've got it I'm late but then after you do it you're like I'm so glad I did that yeah 
that's, that's what the album is. is. Yeah. You know, it's basically 42 minutes on an emotional treadmill. <laughs> we had no idea you were making a record. Was that important? That there was no kind of like hint that you weren't in a magazine or an online magazine like currently in the studio? Yeah. You know what I mean? Was it important that you had the space to create away from all of us? No, I don't, I don't mind. What, one thing I'm learning is I don't mind what anyone thinks. It's <laughs> okay. If someone thinks we're making a record, if someone thinks we're the best band, the worst band, someone thinks we're this, we're that, it's okay. You've been known as somebody who's, who's who's done interviews and people have read them or watched them or whatever, and it's 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 been clear in the past, and we get you've got to this point now. But that that used to be obviously a problem, and you said that you know that you were concerned about how people reacted to answers of interviews. And I mean, we've had conversations after interviews where you said, "Did, did that come across okay? What yeah. do I, you know, nah, 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 nah. Yeah. What was the turning point for you whereby you started to let that go? Um, the if you're the the wonderful people around you start to be affected by your insecurity mm. and it's something that I think a lot of English people have and sometimes it takes a trauma to get rid of it in terms of we have like a humility or an insecurity about a lot of th well I've known you a long time and you're right I don't often say you know this is what exactly what we wanted to do and it sounds really good yeah because I would have felt like that was arrogant whereas yeah. now I feel like just tell the truth <laughs> so in this instance I feel like you know what this is exactly what we wanted to make and for some people it will really be important yeah other people that's okay you can listen to something else or <laughs> play Xbox because it's not going to be your it's last not, record and, well, it's, and it is what it is right no now. it isn't going to be our last one but um so you're saying what changed hmm. and it's what changes a certain point that insecurity and stuff doesn't make any sense and it affects your loved ones because they feel like you know is that what happened in, in terms of what in terms of the breakdown of your relationship the subject matter oh, of this album um, well this is a, this is about I wouldn't say I wouldn't use the word breakdown this is about this is more of like a, just a realization about mm -hmm. trying to grow up basically and that um, like I said if you don't open yourself up then you can't appreciate the wonder outside so you can be with someone very wonderful and not and because of your own issues I don't want to get too personal sure because of your own issues you cannot let that be celebrated in the right way and uh, it's a uh, what 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 changed for me is I don't want to go through life being scared of it being scared of love being scared of rejection being scared of failure you know ever since our band came out we've been a very polarizing group because we you know we do a certain thing very well and we don't sing God Save the Queen we're just not that that's not our idea of rock and roll and mm. that's brilliant that's just not what we are and you know, about two years ago, I was just like, I'm, I'm, a, I'm a mess, really, because I, I can't enjoy the thing that we're good at, oh, God, and I can't awful. enjoy <laughs> the great things around me. So it's like I've got to not blame anyone else and like make some changes. Were there times when you felt like you know I chose the wrong path in life because this is so painful for me? No, no it's not painful. It's awesome. But I mean, when you were going through it, you couldn't enjoy it. That feels like pain to me. Like to be in a position where you're playing these huge stadiums and you're enjoying all this moment, but you're racked with this insecurity of one one reason. Well, or it's, it's like more. It's more like, well, I don't deserve to be here. I you well, know. Right, but that's the same. I'm thing. sure we all have that. Of course, but not all of us are on stage in front of sixty thousand people on a nightly basis. No. And I suppose what I'm trying to ask is, like, during those those moments that aren't now, when we establish that you're in a great place, you know, because I've been there. Right. A lot of people watching this, just for so you know are watching this going oh, thank god man because I know what he's singing about and I know what he's yeah. talking about it's universal and if you haven't yet you will accept it it will happen life doesn't always go like that so in those and it's not always simple like no. this, the song Magic for example is about is probably about what people might think it's about it's about saying this person is really awesome and, and it's magic and of course certain parts of it have to change because that's life yes but not everything has to be black and white or clear cut and that's okay and it's not a question of you either really love someone or you really hate them and it's you know it's like 
this it's more nuanced than that, especially with the modern world's complications and traveling and you know all all the stuff that comes that comes to life and illness and addiction and all that sort of thing. And yeah. So it's just saying ultimately there's magic between the two people, no matter what anyone else thinks. <laughs> And, and I think, and I hope that uh, other people feel that in their own life. way. Yeah. Because I, I do. That's the beauty of an album like this: is you make it so it's universal for people to be able to relate to in their own way, and experience their life vicariously. Feel like they're not alone because these words and these melodies and this chemistry, like you say, of the band. That's what music is great. Whether you're in a club or in a field or dancing with 60,000 people to Calvin Harris, literally, you're not alone. Yeah. <laughs> you know, or, you know, you're listening to this record, which is obviously a different mood. Um, but it has to be beneficial to the artist, right? Or there's no point in doing it. Or Absolutely. It's complete. You know, I, I write music as a diary. I write it to survive and to make sense of everything. Yeah. It's a gift that I, I'm so grateful for. More and more and more. I love it. I love my, I love my job. I, I'm, I can't believe I'm in my band because otherwise I would be on a ferry just playing <laughs> Elton John songs which is great I love Elton John but and love fairies and I love fairies yes but but uh, but it's for whatever reason the universe gave me these other people that we have this chemistry that makes the Coldplay thing and I'm psyched about it and I love it and, and I'm so happy to be able to say that I love it because for a long time I didn't feel I was able to when did uh, so? Let's talk about the writing process a little bit because you write so many amazing songs and you have this catalogue of incredible. Oh, shut up! But it's, <laughs> <laughs> um, is there a particular time of day or is there a t particular mood? I know it sounds like a strange question, but I'm fascinated by the process and whether or not there are things that you can look back over your career and go, "Well, oh, those are constants." Yeah, that about, help about me. eleven p.m. In my phone, I'll, I'll write um, titles. Ah, you start with titles first. Often, yeah, often. I'll show you that. Don't lose that. Well, this Password is protected, the next right? Password like, protected. Uh, all this stuff. Wow! Oh my lord! There's just reams and. Reams. Were you ever thought about actually creating different pages so you don't have to scroll down for 15 minutes? Look, it's long. I'm, that's okay. <laughs> so, a title, and then I then I then I thought oh, I like that title. It, it fits with what I'm feeling. And then I was just sort of wait, and then around 11 p.m. I'll see if I get called by whatever wow. thing calls you so it is like that's kind of when it comes knocking yeah or sometimes I'll just go and sit and you know fish yeah you know see oh, is, there, is there anything there today and you know there's <laughs> thousands and thousands of voice memos that are just awful just singing do you do it like do you sit in the back of the cab would because like because I like, as you know I, like, around, I play music and I, I write know. songs and yeah, yeah. <laughs> <I'm aware. laughs> and I sometimes find that when I'm kind of singing into in a cab or whatever I'm like do you care like if people are around and you get struck by inspiration do you just throw no, it down no I don't mind you throw it down because I feel like if it wasn't for that I wouldn't be in this situation I wouldn't have my this life this is normally in between albums by the way when you kind of yeah. you normally grow your hair out pull your hoodie up at that point and you're unrecognisable yeah. anyway yeah. by that point it's crazy Chris time but I was thinking I was, I was with my daughter yesterday and I was thinking, God, if it wasn't for music, I wouldn't be with this person. Amazing, isn't it? Right now. Amazing. So I'm very, very awesome. respectful of the thing I got given. So great. Do you, um, and feel free not to answer this question, but you know I'm a dad as well, and I'll tell you straight up, you know, my kids love music, and mm. you know, and, and it just plays a part. And I think for every kid at a certain age, it's obviously fascinating, but you know after a certain point whether yeah. it takes hold. Has it taken hold with, you, with your kids in some respects? Yeah, very much so. Musical, she, she uh, this... Um, shocked me the other day because she was doing she was singing along to Dark Horse you know Katy Perry yeah. song then the rap came Juicy J's rap and she did it verbatim she just went in word for word and um, we were all we were all in the car actually and I and I had to ask who's Jeffrey Dahmer because <laughs> it was a lyrical reference point and uh, I got explained to me yeah. that he was a cannibalistic and I was like I'm, that Tough. was the first time I felt like an old man I was oh, like, did you go PMRC all on it where you were just like I think we need to put a sticker well, on I, it well I, I was I have to be honest I was like I'm not sure how I feel about this <laughs> that she's in the back rapping about him like you know 
what's you know what's amazing saying and this is what I feel so ex excited about musically is that your forthcoming daughter's rap career hey your forthcoming daughter's rap career this should be out next May <laughs> uh, is that um, the boundaries that we all grew up with have just gone yeah yeah gone. thank you so much and it doesn't and I love it it's like even when we were starting out that it had to be defined like you play this kind of music you play that kind of music we don't really mix at the Brits yeah you know whereas now it's just everyone likes everything yeah and that's just wonderful it has and you one can reference anything it has wonderful elements to it. it it would be nice to see a few people not mix at the Brits though that were good times back in the day weren't there a little you bit so. a little bit of fisticuffs here and there it was a competitive time yeah you were competitive me your band everyone was everyone was no pushing. we were just post competitive come on a little bit competitive there was a little who, bit of who? everyone was like we're going to be the biggest band in the world that's competitive in itself yes okay to a certain extent that point yes and you've become that um, well I don't come on we can say it now can't we no you can't okay <laughs> you can't. All right, all right, all right. I'll, I'll tell you the okay, truth okay all right I'm not saying you're bigger than anyone specifically I'm saying you know I'm willing to sign off on that the young um I think One Direction is the biggest band in the world. Well, they have that conversation in a few albums' time. Well, they're great, man. Their songs are I, great. I'm, look, for the record, One Direction, I'm all for it. I think that You're not allowed to say it because you're the king I of cool. I can so. I'm allowed to say it because I'm the king of uncool. <laughs> so I'm the well, man Well, somewhere in the uncle. middle, we're beige. And I'm going to say right now, I don't mind telling you that I think One Direction, for what they do, that's the natural disclaimer. <laughs> natural, natural disclaimer. For what they do, are brilliant. But I just, you know. I'm saying One Direction are brilliant. <laughs> And I'm not kidding. Well, Harry has come to a couple of our shows, and um, he's a sweet guy. Since I think I probably said the same thing about chemistry. I can't really remember. I was too enamoured with his haircut. It's quite a haircut. I was like this. I'm pretty sure I was a straight guy before. <laughs> God, it's sort of so pop curly. Flush. It's just unbelievable. It smells so good. It's just so shiny. What's it's like going full on? of body. Like, what do you use? Well, there's been a lot of... Uh, false headlines recently but this would be a, a real one <laughs> so you can write that if you like I'll, I'll give you a quote I did good 